I just finished the most extreme Tesla motor test ever filmed. Minus 18 degrees Celsius, freezing rain to 43 degrees Celsius, scorching heat. Full load climbs, ice patches, flooded roads. Everyone predicted thermal throttling, power loss, or at least some compromise. But this motor delivered 255 horsepower consistently through all of it. What's truly shocking, it actually consumed less energy in extreme heat than in freezing cold. Only 15.6 kilowatt hours versus 18.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. How does that even work? Let's dive right in. To understand why that heat performance shocked me, we need to start where the test began. In brutal cold that would make most EV owners panic. I set up a baseline first. On a normal 21 degrees Celsius day, this Tesla consumed 14.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on a mixed route. Highway acceleration, city stop and go, moderate hills, standard stuff. That number became my reference point for everything that followed. Then I drove straight into a weather front. Minus 18 degrees Celsius with freezing rain. The kind of cold that makes your phone die in your pocket. Here's where it gets interesting. In the first 30 minutes, consumption spiked to 20.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Battery heating kicked in hard. Inverter losses crept up. The motor felt sluggish initially. But then something unexpected happened. Once the coolant loop hit 35 degrees Celsius, efficiency improved dramatically, settling at 18.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Still higher than baseline, yes, but check this out. A Hyundai Ioniq 5 on the same route last winter? 22.7 kilowatt hours. Ford Mustang Mach E? 24.1 kilowatt hours. Tesla's heat pump integration was cutting the cold weather penalty by nearly 20% compared to competitors. Here's what nobody talks about, though. Torque consistency. In sub-zero conditions, most EV motors lag briefly as lubricants thicken and the stator heats up. It's physics. Yet this Tesla delivered steady 255 horsepower even during back-to-back -back zero to 60 runs. No hesitation, no power fade. The only compromise? Regenerative braking took 12 minutes to unlock fully instead of the usual five minutes. Annoying? Sure. Deal breaker? Not even close. Now, here comes the part that made me question everything I knew about EV motors. Within 36 hours, I was in 43 degrees Celsius ambient heat, with ground temperatures at 57 degrees Celsius, hot enough to literally soften asphalt. This is where thermal protection usually kicks in. This is where power gets cut. Right? Wrong. The motor's cooling loop worked aggressively, keeping stator temps between 73 and 91 degrees Celsius. That's close to the upper limit but still within safe range. And here's the shocking part. Unlike competitors whose power drops once inverter temps hit triple digits, this Tesla maintained full output. Highway merges at full throttle. Repeated uphill accelerations. No throttling whatsoever. Energy consumption in this extreme heat? 15.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's barely above the baseline. Actually lower than the cold weather figure by 3 kilowatt hours. Think about what that means. Tesla's motor efficiency curve actually favors warm conditions. The hotter it got, the more efficient it became, up to a point. The only trade-off was slightly reduced regenerative braking aggressiveness in extended heat exposure. Tesla's software clearly prioritizes keeping battery temps in optimal range over maximum region. 
Smart engineering, not a limitation. Temperature testing revealed the motor's thermal management. But what about the conditions you face every day? Full car, heavy cargo, mountain roads, strong crosswinds hitting you sideways. I loaded up five adults, threw 82 kilograms of equipment in the trunk, and selected a route with 540 meters of elevation gain across 52 kilometers of continuous climbing. Wind gusts between 38 to 52 kilometers per hour added aerodynamic drag. This is the scenario that exposes weak motors instantly. Full throttle 0 to 60, 7.2 seconds instead of the baseline 6.1 seconds, expected with all that mass. But here's what impressed me. The torque curve stayed absolutely consistent over time. Three consecutive hill climbs. Stator temps peaked at 97 degrees Celsius, just under the cooling intervention threshold. Zero power throttling. Zero performance dropouts. Compare that to last year's test on a VW ID.4 Pro with identical load. The ID.4 started throttling after just 11 minutes of climbing. Inverter temps hit 108 degrees Celsius and power got cut. Tesla sustained the entire climb at full performance. Why? Higher capacity coolant pump. Larger integrated stator jacket. Heat transfer rates that exceed most EVs in this class. The crosswinds added another challenge. At 50 km per hour, wind speeds, aerodynamic losses can add 0.4 to 0.6 kilowatt hours per 100 km. During these sections, total consumption rose to 19.1 kilowatt hours per 100 km, still lower than the cold weather test earlier. This confirmed a pattern. Tesla's motor and thermal systems are optimized for moderate to high temperatures, not freezing conditions. After unloading all passengers and cargo, consumption on the same road section dropped by 1.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. The 0 to 60 time returned to 6.3 seconds. Mass matters, even with instant torque, but the key insight? Tesla's motor prioritizes sustained performance over short bursts. Under heavy load, it avoided the sudden dropouts that plague EVs with inadequate thermal management. The final phase pushed into territory most reviewers skip, real traction compromise. I moved to a closed proving ground where surface conditions could be controlled precisely. First up, mixed ice patches. The surface was maintained at minus six degrees Celsius with alternating strips of ice and wet asphalt every 15 meters across a 210 meter stretch. This is where motor control electronics get exposed. How fast can the system react when one wheel suddenly gains or loses grip? Telemetry logs showed something remarkable. The Tesla reduced torque delivery in under 18 milliseconds. That's faster than human reaction time. For context, last winter's Nissan Aria test showed torque modulation between 33 to 41 milliseconds. Still good, but noticeably slower. Tesla's advantage likely comes from higher rate rotor position sensors and aggressive software that stabilizes the motor before traction control intervenes mechanically. On this mixed traction surface, 0 to 40 kilometers per hour took 2.9 seconds versus 2.4 seconds on full grip pavement. But what impressed me wasn't the slight delay. That's physics. It was the complete absence of wheel chatter. Even when ice layers reached 8 millimeters thick, the motor delivered precisely the torque needed to maintain forward momentum without overshooting the grip threshold. Then came standing water. Depths ranging from 22 to 45 millimeters, simulating heavy rain or mild flooding. Splash forces measured up to 230 newtons on the front wheel half during deeper sections. Under this load, the Tesla held RPM variations within plus or minus 3.6%, 
A Kia EV6 in similar testing showed plus or minus 7% variations. Tighter control means smoother power delivery when you need it most. The final challenge, uneven surfaces with raised plates and shallow dips designed to trigger momentary wheel lift. During these instances, the motor cut torque almost instantaneously, 18 to 20 milliseconds, then reapplied it the moment ground contact restored. This rapid response prevents the jarring sensation you get in EVS with slower traction algorithms. What this actually means for you, the data reveals something Tesla doesn't advertise loudly. Their motor isn't just powerful. It's intelligently managed across every variable that affects real-world driving. Temperature extremes, heavy loads, compromised traction, the system adapts without asking you to compromise. But this raises bigger questions. If Tesla can achieve this level of consistency now, what happens when battery density improves? When cooling systems get even more efficient? The performance ceiling keeps rising, but so does the question, how much is enough? So here's the real revelation. Tesla didn't just build a motor that survives extreme weather. They built one that adapts to it. Remember that shocking heat efficiency we started with? It's not luck. It's intentional engineering that flips conventional EV wisdom on its head. Most manufacturers chase peak performance in ideal conditions. Tesla engineered for consistency across the worst conditions you'll actually face. That 18 millisecond traction response? That sustained torque under brutal loads? These aren't specs. They're the difference between confidence and compromise every time you drive. And this is just what current technology can do. Battery chemistry is evolving. Cooling systems are getting smarter. If Tesla's motor performs this well now, what happens when the next generation drops? When solid-state batteries remove thermal constraints entirely? The EV conversation is shifting from, can it handle this, to, what can't it handle? That's the inflection point we're witnessing right now. This is tech revolution, where we test the claims manufacturers make and show you what actually happens in the real world. If you want more deep dives like this, real data, no hype, hit that subscribe button. Now I want to hear from you. Based on what you've seen today, does this change how you think about EVs in extreme climates? Drop your thoughts below. Minnesota winters, Arizona summers. I want to hear your real-world experiences. The future isn't coming. It's already here, being stress-tested in the worst conditions imaginable. And it's passing.